Mompreneur Studio. I'm Anissa Crespo. And on this episode of She Swaps, I am talking to my friend, Robin Castleberry. Robin, welcome. Hi, how is everyone? So excited to have you here today. Robin and I have connected on a lot of different levels. So I'm excited. Um, she's she's kind of like me where she wears a lot of hats and um, has been through a lot of things. And I'm just kind of excited to hear her whole her whole story, her whole journey, all the all the ventures she's into and anything else she wants to share with us. So Robin, thank you for being here and take it away. Um, well, as you mentioned, my name is Robin Castleberry. Um, I um, was born and raised in central Illinois, um, which I currently reside back in Illinois again. Um, I got married um, right out of high school. Um, and it only lasted about three years. Um, after um, when that um, marriage broke up, I moved to Texas to be closer to my mom. Um, well, let me give you a little backstory first. Let's back up a little bit. At the age of six, um, my mom was a single mother with six kids and um, the house burned down and um, my mom wanted to move away. And so she agreed to let my grandparents raise me. So um, to make life a little easier on her as a single mom, um, I have five brothers and I was the only girl. So from the age of six, all through high school, my grandparents raised me. So that's how I stayed in Illinois. And then my mom had moved away and relocated several times and then finally ended up in Texas. So um, at about the age of 18, my grandma had passed away which was basically more like a mother to me since she had raised me. Um, and so after high school, I married, um, I married someone from school that I'd met at school. Um, unfortunately being that young and immature, it didn't work out. Um, we stayed married about three years. And then, um, when I was in my twenties, I moved to Texas, um, Houston area, um, where my mom and, um, my my brothers were at so and like i mentioned i have five brothers so um when i after after a while of living there um i had gotten pregnant with my daughter um i found out before it was too late and didn't marry the person um that her father wasn't really that good of a match for me and um he didn't think that he was the father of my daughter. So basically, um, I raised my daughter, you know, without a father, um, because he, she didn't look like him. Therefore he didn't think that, um, she was his daughter. So, and I didn't push the subject. I didn't care because I didn't really want to be around him. And, um, so when my daughter was about, six months old or so. Um, I was working at a grocery store and still living with my mom. And, um, I met the person that would ultimately end up being my husband, which would be my second husband. Um, he was very charming, very nice. Um, you know, would quote, do anything for anyone or so it appeared. Um, so we dated, for about maybe a year and a half, two years. And he proposed and I was a little unsure um, just because um, I was still mad at myself for not making my first marriage work out because I, I felt like a lot of it was my fault. So um, anyway, we stayed engaged for about six years. I finally agreed to marry him after I had um, gotten pregnant and we had a son together. Um, when my son was um, two, I finally agreed to marry him. So you know, that my son would have a mom and dad that were married. Um, really, that was the wrong reason to get married, but um, he progressively got more controlling um, and verbally abusive. And it got to the point where he would tell me how to dress. Um, he didn't want me leaving the house without makeup or with my glasses on. I had to have my contacts in. Um, he would pretty much tell me what to wear, where I could go, what I could do. And if I went somewhere without him, he was constantly, constantly calling me. So um, 
this went on for years. Um, I was able to work. I did work um, several jobs. However, I was not allowed to work a job that was um, was a better career than what he had because God forbid, you know, I did better than him. So that wasn't allowed. So he worked like at a grocery store um, doing different things there. Um, I was a waitress for several years. So basically those were the kind of jobs that I worked. Um, I stayed at home with my two little kids until, um, well, I worked and then um, Heather would go to daycare and then um, that's my daughter. And then when I, um, when I had my son, I tried to go back to work, but the daycare was too expensive. So I ended up staying home until he was four and was able to go into Head Start. So but anyway, needless to say, many, many years later and moving about probably about 13 times in their lifetime um, because, um, you know, my ex-husband wasn't very good at paying the bills and, you know, I did the best I could, but with two kids, I just didn't make enough waitressing or with the other job. Um, so I found myself um, evicted yet again. Um, so I was basically homeless. I was staying in a hotel. I'd been in a hotel for about four months. Well, my daughter was starting to repeat the cycle. My daughter had a little boy and the dad, the little boy's dad turned out to be a crazy narcissistic person. Also very abusive, um, to my daughter. And, um, I guess the police had got called a few times. And finally, one of the sheriffs told my daughter, you need to get away from this man or you're going to end up losing your son because, you know, he was doing shady things and breaking the law. So, and then basically it made my daughter look bad by association. So she ended up moving, coming with me. And when we got evicted, we were all in the hotel together. Um, and after four months of day in and day out, having to come home to a hotel, um, a hotel that was not in a good neighborhood, um, I watched, um, one day I was driving through the parking lot and watched a man drag a woman across the parking lot. And then, um, of course my husband yelled at me cause I called the police cause it upset me. But, um, he's like, now they'll know who, you, who did it and blah, blah, blah. So, but I didn't care cause I knew it was wrong. So, um, anyway, one day he got ready to go to work. My son was borrowing his truck because his car had broke down. So I had to take him to work. Um, so I told my daughter the night before, I said, when I take him to work tomorrow, we're going to throw as much stuff as we can get in the car and we're leaving. I said, I'm done. We're not doing this anymore. I'm not going to let you and Ryan live like this. I'm done. So, um, that's what I did. I took him to work the next day and, um, I rushed back home and we threw what little belongings we had with us because we were staying in a hotel. It was mostly just our clothes and maybe a few toys for Ryan. Um, and we went to my mom's house that was about an hour and a half away. Um, and unfortunately, that hour and a half away was not enough. The phone calls started, the harassment, the stalking. He would find out where I worked because he had my social security memorized. And he would start calling up there, harassing everybody that I worked with. Um, I had never, ever experienced such a huge level of, of embarrassment in my life um, just by the way he was harassing me. Um, it was ridiculing. He was, he was harassing my friends, my family. He would get on Facebook. He went in the storage building and found an old phone that I had. I had replaced the phone and got a new one, but just had the old one, you know, like in a box or something. Well, I never thought in a million years to clear all the memory off of it. So he went in that phone and got all my names of my friends, family, all the contact information and started harassing them. Wow. Um, he made a, um, a fake um, pornographic video where he had someone um, like Photoshop my face in it and he released it on social media. He was sending it out to all my friends and family. Um, he was sharing it on sites. Um, and I, I just, I couldn't figure out how to make him stop. Um, the police um, in Texas, if you haven't laid a hand on him in 30 days, 
um, they they won't arrest him for domestic violence. So I couldn't get him for that. Um, I had every time he was contacting me and calling, I had phone records. I had printed off screenshots of like when he would go on my Facebook, um, anything he did, emails. Oh my God. There was a stack of emails like this thick. I had a file about this big of proof of all of the harassment. Um, when I went to the police, the, they said the only thing that I could get him on was harassment. And I, like I said, I had to build this file this big and, um, the the police department literally when i would leave there after them talking to them i would i would leave in tears because they made me feel like i was really the one in that video and they wanted to know who the person was in the video that i was performing acts with and that it had to be me and it's okay if it was me if he persuaded me to do it um and it was like they didn't believe that it wasn't me and they didn't believe me and so needless to say, I would leave there in tears and felt like they were not helping me at all. They were just making it worse. So I was able to file charges against him, but in the state of Texas, um, the charges were filed in the county that I was in and he was in a different county. So they won't just pick up the phone and go look for somebody for no reason. So it took over two years for them to catch him and for him to go to jail for that. And then, of course, they let him out on bond and gave him a little slap on the hand. So, but I did prove the harassment, but I could not get him on domestic violence. Um, he never stopped harassing me, even through the whole court case or anything. Um, he still occasionally, you know, comes up, you know, where he tries to message a friend or something and find out what's going on with my life. Um he used his son, he, he used our son against me. He told our son, you know, all these terrible things about me. And my son ended up not speaking to me for two years until he finally realized that, you know, what his dad was saying wasn't true. And that's not really the person I am. And so we finally reconnected. So, um, so that's basically my domestic violence journey. I basically moved to Illinois and got a restraining order because Illinois would allow me to. I had enough evidence um, for the laws here to get one. Um, so I had that for, I think it was good for two years. Um, and I divorced him after I had been here six months because you got to reside six months before you can divorce someone. I divorced him and um, I haven't looked back. Um, my my only regret regret is that I didn't leave sooner or divorce him sooner, but I know that I had to go through those things to get to the point of who I am now. So um so one of my big um one of one of my hats that I wear is um to fight for people in domestic violence situations to educate and to help people not stay in that situation like I did for all those years. So um, I found out really quick that it was very harmful for my children. My daughter watched it um, and started living the same life following in my footsteps. So that cycle had to be broken. And then my son, on the other hand, he watched the abuse. So um, I realized after how much harm it did by me staying there all those years, um, just because I didn't want to be a single mom, you know, and really I was because I was doing everything myself anyway, but so that is my story about how I became a domestic violence advocate. Um, I went through many years of counseling and um, basically um, the more he harassed me, the matter I got, okay? And then the matter I got, the more determined I got to try to do something about it, to try to do something about the harassment, um, you know, the abuse, you know, to try to help people as best I could. So I met this wonderful lady. Um, I had went on my, um, on my Facebook and did a story. Um, I told my story of my domestic violence journey and I met this wonderful lady that reached out to me, um, that, um, she, we, we had a, um, 
a mutual friend on Facebook and she reached out to me and she said, Hey, she said, I am the um, U S director of domestic violence awareness. I would like for you to be my director in Illinois. And I said, really, what does, what all does it entail? So we talked back and forth. Um, we quickly became very good friends. We're both Gemini. So we have a lot in common. And so, yeah, so she does it. She, when she started, she did it for her. She did started doing for areas, but now it's worldwide. Um, there's, um, there's domestic violence awareness groups in several countries now, including like Puerto Rico and um, um, several other countries. I couldn't even name them all off, but so it's, it's worldwide now. So, but I run the Illinois one. Um, my husband was also um, in an abusive relationship. His um, daughter's mother um, basically would, she was, she was a drug addict and she basically would, um, she chased him down with a knife one time and tried to kill him and poured hot coffee on him and all kinds of terrible things. So um, he's a survivor also. He's also um, a military veteran. Um, he's 100% service connected. He um, hurt his shoulders when um, because he was a combat medic from carrying all the heavy equipment. So, um, so she later on asked him, because he helped me run Illinois, um, she later on asked him if he would start a, um, a domestic violence group for military. So he runs the one for the military for the U S so, um, he does that. Um, so, and the way that my husband and I connected, we were, we reconnected as friends on Facebook after not seeing each other for over 30 years, we had both went to school in, in, in the town that we live in. So, and we didn't date when we were in high school or anything, but we just knew each other, but we connected as friends. And, you know, once I started going through all the terrible things with my marriage, he was just a friend, someone I could talk to. And once he knew that I had left my husband and everything, you know, um, you know, he was the person that I would call and talk to all hours of the night when I was upset and stuff. And, um, finally one day he told me, he goes, you know what? He goes, I had a crush on you when we were in school and we have a lot in common. We've both been in abusive relationships, um, you know, and I want to be your friend no matter what, but do you think, you know, we could try to see if there's something there, if we could have a relationship. So we did and it blossomed. And so we got married during COVID. Um, and so this year will be four years that we've been married and, um, you know, it's, it's funny how you go through a lot of storms and then, um, not knowing what God has in store for you. And then, you know, that was one of those things where, okay, God, I know that was you because I would have never in a million years, you know, thought that my soulmate was someone that I went to school with. So, but that's how we got to be together and married. And so I have my two kids and he has a daughter. So, and, um, we have grandkids and, um, so, um, that's how I became um, involved in the domestic violence stuff. Um, I do, um, I have not had an event since COVID for my Illinois domestic violence. Um, I lost a lot of people, a lot of volunteers. They decided they didn't want to help volunteer anymore after COVID went. And, and um, so I'm regrouping, trying to find some new volunteers um, so that we can do an event. Um, so that's where I stand on that. And, um, I, um, let's see, what else can we talk about? So I do still, um, I do still run the page though. So if people reach out to me, I still answer messages, um, and try to help people, um, find resources. So I still do that part of it. I just haven't had any benefits for the group in a while. Um, I also, um, my husband and I started out as volunteers at a rape crisis center. We got certified to do that. Um, my husband still volunteers and, um, I now work, um, usually four days a week on call. Um, basically what that means is I answer the hotline after hours, um, if a call comes in. So, um, I work four days on and usually three days off. So, um, they're very long hours. You work from like 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. the next morning. Um, 
And of course, you just answer your phone if they call you. I have a special ringtone. So, but that I do that now. So that's my part time job. And then, of course, my other part time is job is Mary Kay. Um, I joined Mary Kay um, in 2021. So it was after COVID had came and went. Um, I um, I had did a virtual pampering. One of my friends had invited me to and um, fell in love with the products. So the lady that did it kept telling me, you know, oh, you're so pretty. You'd be so good at this, you know. So, of course, I would help her out and watch her videos and do all the things. And, um, you know, I kept thinking about it. And I was working a part-time job taking care of a lady with Alzheimer's. And then COVID came and of course the family came and took her to live with them. And then she, she ended up in a, in a, in a assisted living. So I was out of that job, that part-time job. So, um, I thought, well, I need to do something. What am I going to do? So, um, I had become friends with this lady that gave me, did the virtual facial. Um, we talked back and forth and, um, you know, she kept asking me and I said, well, I don't know. Let me think about it. I said, I don't like to jump into things without knowing what I'm getting into. So um, I thoroughly, um, you know, I Googled it. I looked up history on Mary Kay, um, did all my research, um, you know, um, of course, the story of Mary Kay. And, and she was a single mom also and created Mary Kay so um, so that women would be treated equally and be praised for their hard work because it was something in the working world that she did not feel like she was appreciated and she kept getting passed over um, for job positions because she was a woman. So that is how Mary Kay kind of came about. She knew she wanted to start her own business. She just didn't know what she wanted to do yet. So the idea of the business came first and then the skincare line came and the makeup. So, um, of course she's no longer with us. Um, but it is still a family, um, a family ran company. Um, you cannot buy stock in Mary Kay because it's a family owned business. Um, like I said, the family members still run it. I believe her, her grandson is a CEO now. So, um, but I, I joined in, I finally said yes and joined in August of 2021. Um, like I said, after doing lots of research, um, you know, I, um, I researched, um, of course, all the makeups made in Dallas. If it's not made in Dallas and, and if it's outsourced for some special ingredient or reason, um, then, you know, they don't disclose that. They'll tell you where it was made and why it was made there. Um, Instead of following U.S. Um, standards, they follow European standards, which are, are a lot stricter, which means no animal testing, which means um, everything that they use in there, they have to list as a product. Um, so you're not getting a bunch of harsh chemicals or things that are bad for you. And um, they, um, they plant trees. A lot of the most of the packaging is like 99% recyclable. Um, and then they, like I said, they plant trees every year. They have what's called a Mary Kay Ash Foundation. Um, and this was one of the, this was, this was the final, the final push for me to join. Um, Cause I'd done my research. I'd saw that they, you know, they're, they're green company. Most of their ingredients are all natural. Most of the smells you smell are something natural. You're smelling. They're made in Dallas. They don't animal test. They're doing all these great things um, as a company. And um, then I found out they have something called Mary Kay Ash Foundation. I was like, well, what's that? And um, you can join this and you can donate money every year and or you can do fundraisers to go towards this cause. And what it does is it benefits um, women's cancer of all sorts. And they donate money for research for that. And then they also donate. Um, they donate money to domestic violence shelters. So throughout the, the world. So, and I think I read, and don't quote me on this, cause I might be wrong that they've donated over um, $40 billion since they've started or something like that to the cause. So, um, and then what they do is they keep that, that, at, that 
foundation separate from Mary Kay. So all of the money that's raised from your consultants and, and your consultants can do fundraisers that go towards it too. And other people that just donate, you know, cause sometimes it's not just your consultants and your directors that donate, it's other people. All of that money goes into that and they, all of that money that they take in, they use, um, it's a huge percentage of the money. It's not like, you know, 40% of it. Um, I think they said it's like 90% or 80% of the money. Um, they keep some, you know, for their, to keep their production going and advertisement or whatever. But, um, the majority of that money anyway, does go to those causes. So, um, that was kind of what pushed me. I was like, Hey, I'm an advocate and I love Mary Kay. And if I can do something that's giving back to one of the causes that mean a lot to me, then that's perfect. So that's what made me decide to join. So, so that's where I'm at. I've been in, uh, two years since 2021. So this year will be, this summer will be three years. Um, I wouldn't say I'm like on fire <laughs> with the career. I'm more of a slow and steady learn as I go kind of woman. So I'm getting there. I'm learning a lot. Um, I'm doing um, tutorials on makeup and different things to get where I need to go, um, you know, to move up. Um, you know, I like, it's a company they give you, cons they're constantly rewarding you for all of your little baby steps along the way. You can win jewelry and of course you can earn a car. Um, there's actually three levels of cars you can earn. It's not just the Cadillac. That's, that's, that's the big one right there, but they, they have a level that consultants can have a car and then they have, um, they have a, a middle, middle size that's, that's for directors. And then of course the Cadillac, um, which is called a Cadillac director and you really have to sell a lot of Mary Kay <laughs> and have a lot of people under you to get that Cadillac. But, right. um, but um, yeah, so my future goal in includes, you know, um, moving up the ladder and um, um, taking my family to Disney this summer is the goal that I'm working on right now. And, um, you know, after all of the abuse um, and hard times that my kids went through as children, we never got to take a family vacation. So it's really important for me to do this Disney trip. And, um, um, our, our girls have met each other, but, um, my son has not met his stepsister, um, or his stepdad yet. So I've seen him a few times when I went to Texas, but, um, my husband has not got to meet him yet either. So this is going to be a really huge thing for us. We'll get to, to be together as a family and bond and have a great time. And my kids will finally have a, a wonderful family vacation that they never had as children. So, but, so that's one of my goals. And then of course, my longer term goal is to get one of those cars. Um, and of course, you know, normal things that people want, you know, like a nice house and, you know, things like that. So, but I'm really excited about the vacation more than anything. It does fall on the week of my birthday. So that's exciting too. Um, and I was just talking to my son last week and, you know, I said, yeah, it falls on my birthday. I said, but you know what? the best present a mom could ever ask for is just to have all of her kids together in one place on her birthday. So I thought that wow. was really exciting. <laughs> um, so yeah, and, and, you know, like I said, my future goals are just, um, just to work up, work up that ladder and get more, um, to get more team members. Um, this month we, we have, um, $10 to join, which is, a, it's never been that low, even since I've been in. Um, and that gets you your website and your, your pro pay account so that people can go on your website and use a, a credit card. Um, so we're, we've, we've been pushing really hard to get some new team members, um, with that crazy price. So they can, uh, they can join to do it as a career or they can join just to get the 50% the off discount. Um, so you pay 10 bucks, you can get that 50% off discount for the rest of your life. As long as you're, um, a Mary Kay team member, you know? So, so that's what we're doing this month. But, um, yeah, down the road, I'd like to, um, um, I'd like to become a director. I've already picked out my unit name. It's going to be castle unit, of course, for Castleberry. So, um, I envision a big castle for the theme and <laughs> all kinds <laughs> of good stuff. 
and of course i'll be the queen of the castle you know? <laughs> yes <laughs> so but that's my future goals is to become a director and earn a car and just keep moving up um i just got back from minnesota and we had a conference and um one of the reasons that i fell in love with mary Kay and joined was um the the sisterhood and that's the only word i can think of to put it and hopefully I won't get teary eyed because I get a little emotional when I talk about it. Um, I have never been around women that are so loving and supported, supporting of each other. Um, each person's goals are different because everybody's at a different point in their life. And just, you know, anytime you win any award, you know, they're standing up, they're cheering for you, you know, um, and then Mary Kay comes and awards you with, you know, a little gift and a thank you note, you know. Your director tells you you're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Um, and we just, we really bond going to all these conventions and stuff. Um, we'll, you know, we'll have dinner afterwards and we'll all have dinner together or we'll all room together in the same um, little condo or, or hotel, whatever. It's really great. And um, I never dreamed in a million years that I would become a part of a company that, um, with women that feel more like your family than just, you know, coworkers. So, but they are, they're, they're, I've met so many wonderful people and, you know, there's a lot of times when, when, um, I'll hit my goal and, um, I just can't believe how supportive everyone is, you know, even if you think it's a little goal or doesn't matter to them, it's a big deal. So, and I never dreamed in a million years that, um, hitting little goals. Um, you know, I could feel that way, um, by praise from other women. So, but yeah, there's many, many a days when I'll, I'll have a good day in Mary Kay and, you know, um, during my little daily prayer or, um, my quiet time or meditation or whatever, you know, I'll say, thank you, God, you know, for leading me to Mary Kay. Um, it's one of those things I didn't know I needed it, but I did. So it's really been, it's really helped me with my healing process with my domestic violence too. Um, just getting to know all of these women and many of the women that are also consultants, um, a good portion of them have dealt with domestic violence or know someone that has. So, so it's been a blessing. So, and my husband tags along with me everywhere since he's retired and, um, you know, service connected and stuff. So we go everywhere together. So they, um, the ladies love him. I mean, you know, he's like the bodyguard or whatever. So he, um, they love it. So. Wow. Robin, I just love that story. I mean, your, your journey has been tremendous and you know, you're, you, you're still on it and you are going to get to that Cadillac one day. And, you know, I heard a lot of things along the way. I heard um, the first thing when you when you first started talking about, you know, obviously the DV uh, situation that you were in um, was you dropped him off at work and you had to scrape up what you could fit in the car, grab your kid mm -hmm. and go. And that had to be terrifying. Like it was, it was, it was, it was terrifying that. I knew he couldn't just show up at home because I'd taken him to work, but I'm telling you, it was if he knew something was off because he started blowing up my phone. And of course I didn't answer it, which made it worse. So, um, but yeah. And, and one of the things that made my son stop talking to me is because I didn't tell him about it ahead of time. Like I did my daughter, but my daughter was there and I needed to give her a heads up so that she would know, Hey, we need to hustle. You know, we need to get out of here. Sure. So, yeah, um, there's, um, there's there's a movie with um, Jennifer Lopez, and I think it's called Enough. If I'm not mistaken, is. I've yeah. watched it several times. I'm sure it resonates. So, and she does that. She literally like scoops up her child, and she's she's got this whole plan mapped out, and it's her heart is palpitating, like mm -hmm. she, she's terrified. And I and I can't even imagine. I've never personally been in a domestic violence situation like that, um, but I certainly have known women who have, and and it's hard. I yeah. mean, there are so many women out there who are just feel stuck, like they have nowhere to turn, no resources. And they need people like you to 
stand up for them and help them and show them like, here's what you can do. Here's how you do it. Yep. Um, and then, like you said, you know, after COVID, you, you know, you're struggling for the, uh, the funding and whatnot. And, um, I just want to know if anybody wants to make a donation to the cause or be a volunteer, um, what's the best way they can go about that? Um, they, um, they can send me, um, we can, um, we can put the email for the domestic violence awareness. Um, we can attach it to this, um, okay. to this, uh, video. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we'll make sure we have all the links and emails just in case somebody wants to get involved or just, uh, make a donation because, uh, we need help with that. I mean, there are a lot of women out there that, you know, they're going through some really rough stuff and uh, they feel like they've been, a lot of times what happens is they've been isolated from their family and friends. So they don't have anybody around them that they could just, you know, reach out. Sometimes they're moved across state lines and in some cases, even out of the country. Yes. Um, it's crazy. It really is, but it's happening every day. And um, I love that we have women like you out here helping and and standing up and saying no more i mean you you had so much stolen from you from a man as far as like you know they take things like your dignity they take things like your self esteem but something that was stolen from you was your time with your child because his head was filled with lies and that's not something that you can build i mean yeah you can rebuild a relationship but you can't get time back and, you know, it, it's, it's terrible and, um, good for you for standing up and saying no more, I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to put my kids through it. And good for you for recognizing the, the similar behaviors for your daughter. I mean, that's gotta be tough to watch a cycle start to repeat like that. Yeah. I, I blamed myself. Um, when I saw her repeating the cycle, you know, it, it was her behavior and she saw me going through it. So. Um, but, um, um, we've, uh, we've both come out a lot stronger because of it. And, 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 um, and, and my daughter and I are closer now because of going through what we did and getting the help that we needed. And, um, so I can rest assured that no one will ever talk to either one of us in any bad way or try to tell us what to do. So. Well, good for you for, for standing up. And, um, you know, the other thing that you were saying was, you know, your husband went through a situation. I mean, this is just a great point because men go through this too and women are abusive. And what makes it, I'm not going to say makes it worse because one is not worse than the other, but what makes it bad is that they feel like they can't speak about it. Because, you know, for men, it's like they're supposed to be like the strong ones and, you know, they're not supposed to ask for help or they're, you know, oh, a woman abused you like that's supposed to be some sort of a demeaning thing. And it's not. Women are narcissistic, too. Women are abusive, too. You mentioned she was an addict. Um, you know, people have issues and it turns them into ugly things. And, you know men need a voice as well and, and need advocacy also so that they can get out of situations that they're in. So what a beautiful, um, just a beautiful little evolution of, you know, both of you having gone through this thing, he had a crush on you, you, you got back together later in, um, you know, in your, in your town and, and now you have a wonderful relationship. He comes to these uh, conventions with you. Oh, and um, also thank you for his service because, um, you know, right. I appreciate that. And that's just really awesome. I mean, and you also use the word survivor. Like for me personally, I've been through um, my fair share of trauma as well. And I don't ever like to consider myself a victim. I consider myself a survivor because I thank God did make it out and I did overcome. Um, so, you know, it, it's a blessing that we're sitting here having this conversation today and right. um, how awesome that, you know, joining Mary Kay just aligned with your mission 
Um, that's so wonderful. Like the way things just work out and it is, it's, it's like a God shot, right? Like it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's just God yep. doing I this thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, that's just amazing. Your, your journey is, is incredible and, you know, just continue being you. I'm always delighted when I have the chance to talk to you and, um, I look forward in, supporting your journey in any way I can. And um, if you had to leave our audience with just one thing, what would it be? Oh, Ooh, that's a tough one. I have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think, I think it would be, um, don't be afraid to speak out. Um, if you're being abused, reach out to someone. And if you, you know, no matter how many times you got to keep reaching out, eventually someone's going to, you're going to find the right person that can help you and that can help you get the help you need to get out. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much for being here, being brave and courageous enough to do what you did, help other women and just share your story with the world. It's amazing. And, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'm so glad we got to meet each other. Likewise.